Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again, and really quickly, I just want to talk to you guys about the next character that I'm going to play. Um, it's going to be something a bit interesting, kind of like, I guess, Mr. Zug Zug. Um, so I've already got my Caustic Arrow Trickster, which is a damage over time build. I've got my Fire Bro, which is good because with Fossil Crafting, you... I mean, with SSF Fossil Crafting, it's better to kind of like play some things that are mixed up so you don't share all the same fossils. So my next build is going to be a cold-based build, uh, mainly because I really like shattering in general. I told myself I wasn't going to play a physical build, mainly because, I'll be honest, attack-based builds are a lot more difficult for me to play than caster builds. Damage over time is an exception because you just scale damage over time. Um, so this build's going to be a little bit out of my comfort zone, and I don't really know how far it's going to go, but so far it seems pretty cool. So it's going to be a build around... Dun, 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 glacial fucking hammer. Now, I'm not picking this to be like for any specific reason. I guess the main reason is just because I want to play glacial hammer. It's been a skill that's been on my list to play ever since, I don't know, five years ago. Um, and I think that right now it's in a pretty okay spot uh, with the introduction of Ancestral Call that came out a little while ago. So you could also play this build as Ice Crash. Um, I'm not really going to be talking much about Ice Crash, but it would work pretty much the exact same way. It's just you would want to stat stick a dagger instead of a sword, or it doesn't really matter. Just don't, you know, if you're going to stat stick, you need to stat stick properly. And Frost Blades doesn't necessarily work exactly for this build, but if you want to use Frost Blades, you can. So, uh, some points about Glacial Hammer. Number one, it gives 50% conversion. So, 50% uh, conversion with two jewels creates 100% conversion. The Winter Burial Support Gem um, only makes it so that you only do cold splash damage. So I don't know if that means that if you have fire damage it doesn't splash or if it converts it into cold. Simply put, I'm going to assume only your cold damage splashes. We're playing a full cold conversion build. Now since I only have one Winter Burial, since we're playing Solo Cell Found, we pick up our other conversion from the tree. Um, you can simply just buy another jewel. Uh, but some of the main points about Glacial Hammer that I want to talk, talk about is it's got 182% damage effectiveness, which is actually pretty good uh, for a melee skill. It's not really that bad. It's got chill duration on quality, which is it's not really that important, but 40% chill duration is kind of nice. Um, and it gets 20% freeze duration on enemies. The freeze duration is really good because it's going to increase the duration of how long targets are frozen. I do believe it also lowers that minimum cap to start freezing targets because of the way the duration scaling works. I could be wrong on that. Um, so, next up, I want to talk about the weapon type that we're going to use. Ideally, my goal is to chance a Frost Breath. Unfortunately, I did sell one of these at the beginning of my playtime in the League. Um, Mainly because Frost Breath is like a really good starter weapon. It, you can find it at level 50 and attacks with this weapon deal double damage to chilled enemies. So it's just a good weapon like all in all. Uh, I don't have one right now. I may hold off on playing the build till very far until I get a Frost Breath. Mainly because I've never used this weapon before and sometimes it's just fun to try to find, you know, play with things that aren't commonly used. One of the weird things about this weapon is you can pretty much only find it from chancing and jack-in-the-box according to the wiki. I haven't really looked into too much if this is actually like the only way to get it, but I've put it on our chance filter for right now. Uh, I'm also not bored of my other characters at all. I'm almost at a shaper. It's just, you know, sometimes you just want to play another character and not do the same thing that you've been doing for 5 leagues or 7 leagues or 15 leagues. So, to talk about the passive tree and ascendancy choices, I have decided on champion. Now, I do want to say that Juggernaut probably has more endgame potential. Uh, I don't think Champion <clears throat> is bad by any means. It's just Juggernaut seems pretty overpowered in the current meta because of the ridiculous amount of physical reduction they get, along with Crazy Sustain, with Chaos Resist, Elemental Reduction, Regeneration, Accuracy Scaling, Unstoppable. They just have, they're pretty fucking overpowered, but I don't want to play a Jug right now. So I decided to go with the more Lazy Man's approach, which is a Champion. Now the reason why I call the champion the lazy man's approach, and why I still think they're pretty good, is because we get access to conqueror into worthy foe. So conqueror is going to make it so we taunt every hit, <clears throat> even on targets that are immune to taunt, I do believe they still get the debuff, I could be wrong on that, I'm pretty sure the debuff still works. So by hitting a target we take 6% reduced damage, pretty decent, we get life regen, it's okay, it's whatever. 
Uh, we get Worthy Foe, which means that enemies you taunt, which is everything, takes 20% increased damage, which is a multiplier, and enemies taunted by you cannot evade attacks. This means I can skip every single accuracy node on the tree, and I don't have to look for accuracy <clears throat> excuse me, anywhere on my gear, and that's why I call it kind of like the lazy man's build, which is nice for me because I don't have to worry about accuracy. Part of the reason why I get annoyed with attack builds is because you've got accuracy, you've got crit, you've got uh, wed you're scaling everywhere, you've got attack speed, you have to factor in the physical damage of your weapon, and then you've got conversion. It's a lot of shit to play around with instead of just playing a build that goes, hey, just scale damage over time. Um, we also get access to Unstoppable Hero, which is really nice. 10% uh, attack speed, melee damage, 1,000 armor, 1,000 evasion, and stun immunity. And then we get Fortitude, uh, which basically just gives us Fortify, so we don't really have to, um, don't really have to worry about Fortify. Now, this is why I was saying it's probably going to be better played as a Jug, because you can just get Fortify on a movement ability, but this is just nice to have it all the time. Um, the other option is playing it as a gladiator, and of course, I have so many regret orbs in SSF, I could just respect to a gladiator if I feel that I want to play it as a gladiator. Um, but let's talk about the tree now. It gets 186% life, <clears throat> pretty decent, um, only two jewel sockets, unfortunately. <coughs> Excuse me, I think in this current layout, it's only one jewel socket, which is the jewel right here. The build does pick up Leech, so we don't really have to worry about Leech. We get 15% block from the tree, along with, I think, the base block from Dual Wield, which puts us at 30. Um, unless Dual Wield base block is 20, I haven't actually looked. We don't really pick up any Mace nodes. Um, this is a build focused on the right side of the tree. We have Iron Reflexes, which means that we're... And again, I can res I can respect Iron Reflexes and change the tree around. Really, I have to play the build to understand exactly what I need. But for right now, since I'm already playing an Acrobatics character, I decided I was going to go Iron Reflexes and get an Evasion chest piece, and basically that gets converted over to armor. And then having maybe like twenty to 30,000 armor, maybe even 40k if we're pushing it, uh, with Fortify, with Block, which should, should hopefully be pretty nice. So this is kind of like similar of how the tree works. This is where we pick up the rest of our conversion, which is Winter Spirit, which puts us at 115% conversion. You can't go past 100, so the other 15% is garbage. Again, if we had another jewel, we would simply just... Actually, I don't even know where the other jewel would go because it's a strength jewel, so this might actually be pretty cool. Um, we get a decent amount of crit from the tree as well. Everything looks pretty solid. The main reason I decided to focus on the right side of the tree instead of the left side of the tree is because since we're converting to elemental, we do get access to penetration. So we have, for example, 5% Ellie Pen here. We have 8% Ellie Pen Fangs of Frost. And we have another 6% um, Pen on Forces of Nature. And then, of course, the right side of the tree is more crit oriented. Um, so we have like <clears throat> Assassination up here. We get Trickery. Um, I think we get Will of Blades, which is a tiny bit of crit. We've got crit over on Heartseeker, along with the points in fencing that I know a lot of people don't get, but I mean, this is 80% crit. We also get twin terrors. So just literally right here in itself is 180% crit, which is, that's pretty fucking good in my opinion. Um, we also have the option of getting flash nodes for later. Remember, we are scaling evasion, which is going to be converted into armor with iron reflexes. And if we decide that we don't want to go iron reflexes, I'll probably uh, drop this bottom part of the tree, take it up top, and spec acrobatics. And then I won't really spec into block because we're going to get the block penalty. I may still get like, you know, just like these three nodes and these two nodes and whatever. I also kind of wanted to grab aspect of the, or weapon artistry and aspect of the links, but it's just kind of heavy on the points. We're already 119, so can't really do too much on, on what we have right now. But yeah, that's pretty much how the character works. So just to minimize that and get in game, I want to show you I have like a little bit of gear waiting for the character. Not too much, but over here, uh, I have some Prim Sorrows. I don't know if I'm going to use Prim Sorrows. I'm probably not going to use from Sorrows, but I figured I uh, might as well just quality them up, link them up, corrupt them. Maybe I get Ellie Weakness on hit or something. Then that would just be really nice. Because the goal is to use Hatred, which still works after conversion. Hatred, Herald of Ice. And then if we can get an Enlighten, it's probably going to be Hatred, Herald of Ice. And then Herald of Purity. Is that what it's called? The flat physical one? So 
We've also got Belt the Deceiver. I've got a couple of them we're gonna vol and see pretty much what happens here. Uh, Belt the Deceiver is just gonna be a nice leveling piece. I may just use it throughout the entirety. It's good because it gives uh, all res, it gives strength, which is melee physical and life, gives you global physical, I think I said that already. All res and nearby enemies are intimidated and it reduces extra damage from crits, which is really important if you're doing like high-end maps because crits are usually what kill people. Uh, but Intimidate makes targets take 10% increased attack damage. Of course, we can also just use Tomb Fist. I'm probably going to vol both of these and see what ends up happening with them. Uh, and then thankfully, I do have a Steel Ring to craft, so that's really nice. It's item level 81. Um, and then for leveling, I was explaining about stat sticks, so I kind of want to explain a little bit on how that works. So when you play a stat stick, a stat stick build, you'd basically have your main hand weapon and your stat stick. Now, the way this works is if you read Glacial Hammer, uh, I don't know if I alt tabbed it or closed it, here we go. Glacial Hammer specifically states that requires a mace or a staff, which means my mace is in my main hand right now and my, my basically my stat stick is in my off hand. So this is going to force me to attack with my main hand weapon only because Glacial Hammer is not compatible with a sword. So we gain the 29% of physical damage as extra cold. Later on, you can do things with Shaper and craft like a really crazy stat stick, but this is just like for the leveling purpose. Now, one other thing that's really cool to note is there's this note on the tree that is called Ambidexterity that we pick up with our build. Ambidexterity gives us 20% attack speed with our offhand which means if we were to go ahead and just swap these around, we are now only hitting with our offhand and we gain 20% attack speed all the time for having this in our offhand. The only downside to this is if we decided to use Vol Double Strike, Vol Double Strike does require you to use your main hand weapon, but that's okay because you know we'll just switch it for that, that purpose. But just for the most part, uh, Ambidexterity is a crazy, crazy strong note on the tree. Now, with ancestral call and the um, with ancestral call and the melee splash uh, glacial hammer jewel, I did test it out, and we should be able to like effectively clear an entire pack of mobs without having to use melee splash or inkoe, which is really good because that means for single target I could just remove ancestral call and simply put in like I don't know multi strike or something. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Just wanted to give you guys some updates on the next character. I don't know exactly when I'm going to be playing it. Um, I was trying to farm some maps over here. I was basically running tier 15s the entire time trying to get a shaped and or elder one-handed mace that I could craft. I didn't end up finding anything. I still haven't even found this dude's scepter yet. I don't know what's with these shaper and elder drops. They're literally not dropping anywhere. Um, but I was trying to find one of those before I started playing the build, but I'm probably just going to play it for a little bit. And then I, my other goal was trying to get a Frost Breath, which I showed you guys that's on the Chance Filter. Can't find that yet either. We're going to find something eventually. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and jump into playing the character. I did also find a Lion's Roar, which is perfect. And a Rumi's, which is perfect. The Rumi's is kind of what makes me want to play Gladiator because, I mean, this would just be crazy for Spell Block. This is like capped Spell Block, basically. I'm pretty sure it's Gladiator and Block. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much about it. I uh, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. Hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everyone.